Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Don't get your theology from Facebook, but it was interesting this week. A, a rabbi showed up on my Facebook feed, and I clicked on his thing. He said, that a special message about Bethlehem. Yeah, okay, I'm going to hear this guy's thing. He's, they filmed him over there in Israel and Bethlehem. I've been to Israel many times, so I'm looking. There he is. He's standing in, in, the, in the area of Bethlehem, and he's giving a message about these shepherds. And he says, this is something that the Jewish culture is aware of, but the Gentiles aren't really familiar with their culture. But in the Jewish culture, they actually uh, had shepherds assigned to raise sheep. And these sheep had to be without blemish because they were used in the, in the temple sacrifices. Remember the, when the people would come to give an offering, they were to, instructed in the Levitical law to give an offering without blemish. So they had these flocks of sheep were these shepherds. It was literally their charge to, to shepherd these flocks and to separate out the ones with blemishes and keep these, these flocks. They, 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 were, they were the sacrificial sheep. Now this is interesting because this rabbi says that in the area of Bethlehem was the area, the city of David, what Levitically was assigned the job to the shepherds to raise the sheep for the temple sacrifices. I was like, oh, I never really heard that. It's an interesting fact. I mean, what if you were one of the shepherds and your job literally was raise sheep without blemish because when it comes time for sacrifice, they're going to come and ask for one of your sheep to take down to Jerusalem to do the sacrifice at the temple. And then he says, I submit to you that the shepherds that Jesus appeared to were the very shepherds that were, that were assigned the job of raising the sheep for sacrifices. And here they are raising the sheep to be sacrifices for sin. And God re announces the birth of his son and says, Today is born for you a Savior, Christ the Lord, the Messiah, the one that will save, the one that will be the perfect, Lamb. what? What did John call him? The Lamb of God? That takes away the sense. You guys go and see this thing, and he will be wrapped in swaddling cloth. And I didn't know, but the this rabbi went on to say the swaddling cloth was the very cloth what they would use to swaddle the the newborn lambs and the sheep when they were born. And here the angel is announcing to them, Go and this will be a sign for you. The baby will be wrapped in swaddling cloth. Now, can you imagine your job is to raise the sheep for sacrifice and you come and you see the babe? The babe who's the Lamb of God, wrapped in swaddling cloth, who's going to take away the sins of the world. You're seeing the sacrifice that God prepared. Here's my lamb. I mean, it's pretty powerful when you think of it in that light, that those guys got to be the ones to see it. And they go and they announce it to Mary, and she's, she's pondering this in her heart, thinking about this is the angel. Wow, what a night this is. Now, some of you are like, Where, where's the, the wise men? When, when do they get to the stable? I always get in trouble because I, I, I'm going to help you if you're one of those folks that sets up your little manger scene. Like, if you go to Israel, they sell them in olive wood carved and... You know, you get the whole set and comes with three magi and a couple camels and all this stuff. And they put it all together. And I'm like, you know, if you read the scripture, you got to turn to Matthew chapter 2 to find this out. Let me just show you something real quick. In Matthew chapter 2, it says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, it says that the, there was magi that are from the east that arrived in Jerusalem. They didn't arrive in, in Bethlehem, they arrived down in Jerusalem. And they, they, they asked, where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now when Herod heard this, uh, if you don't know anything about history, this guy, he's not very happy about this. He, he <laughs> he's having conniptions. It says he was troubled, it says in the Bible. Troubled, yeah. 
and, and, and all in Jerusalem with him. So gathering together the chief priests and scribes and the people, he inquired of them, where was the Messiah to be born? Did you know that the, here's this, this guy is not even, uh, we would say a student of scripture or anything. He just gets the religious folks and says, where does it say in your scriptures the Messiah is to be born? And they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you shall come forth the ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And Herod secretly called for the Magi and determined the exact time that the star appeared. And so he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search carefully for the child, and when you've found him, report to me so that I I too may come and worship him. Do you guys think he was really going to go worship? No. And hearing this, the, the, the king, they went on their way. It says, And the star which they had seen in the east went on before them until it came and stood over the place where the child was. Now when, when the star, when they saw it, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And after coming into the, what's your Bible say right there? The stable? No, it says house. They saw the child and Mary with her, her, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. And they opened their treasures and presented him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. There's a whole study about that, but not, not for today. He says, And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Then when they had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up. Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night and left for... I love Joseph, man. This guy's obedient. He really was. He, he, he obeyed the angel and took her as his, uh, as his wife when the angel told him. Now he obeys the Lord again flees for Egypt and he remains there until the death of Herod that that which was spoken by the Lord to the prophet he said out of Egypt did I call my son this is amazing there's prophecies about the Messiah but just to fulfill them that you'd be born in Bethlehem called out of Egypt that you would well there's a few more Matthew tells us about they'll be mourning because of this child and we read on then then Herod saw that he'd been tricked by the Magi he became enraged he sent and slew all the male children in Bethlehem and its vicinity from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the Magi. In other words, the Magi had said that the star had appeared about two years prior. So by the time that the Magi get there, they're not in a stable anymore. So if you've got your manger scene, don't put the Magi right by the stable. Just scooch him over to the side and say, look, they're following the star. It's going to take two years till they get there, kids. It's okay. They'll get there. But by the time they get there, they won't be in this, the manger. They're going to move into a house. And then they'll come and visit them in the house. So if you want a real complete set, get a little house for them to move into. And two years later, get the little magi, scooch them up next to the house, and let them go see the house. I'm just telling you that because my whole life we grew up with the magi right there, camels kneeling down, their little presence right in front of the baby Jesus in the stable. It's not really scripturally accurate. No, don't worry. God's not sending you to hell if you played your little manger scene a little, you know, commercialized. But I just want you to know the facts of the scripture. These guys, they came looking for the Messiah. But their coming causes Joseph to get a dream from the Lord and he picks up the baby and picks up, I mean, he's got, probably Jesus is about two years old at this time. Picks up his son, picks Mary, we got to get out of here, the angel told me, we got to flee. And all of a sudden, they've got to flee from Bethlehem all the way down to Egypt. Later, the angel will appear and say, okay, you have to go back. But then he's going to say, nope, to Nazareth. And, and just to fulfill, Matthew says, another scripture that I, he shall be called a Nazarene, God has to reroute them to Nazareth. Now this is, this is all for the sake, I believe, of the Jews. So they could not mistake who was the true Messiah. That he would fulfill all of these little scriptures that were prophesied about. But for us, 
We get to just relish the fact that God gave a gift. God made his very being, his very essence, his logos. That word became flesh. And the Christmas story is the best thing, man. God fulfilled that, that burning question that is in so many people's minds. If God, you're really there, show yourself. And God goes, I have. And you know, when I was a new Christian, I used to uh, have people, they'd ask me that question as if I'm stupid for believing in a God. Because to them, he hadn't shown up. And I'm like, but he has. And they would want to argue with me. And I'd be like, oh, I got a question for you. Just help me out here. You know on the calendar, that ADBC thing? What was that ADBC? Now, I had gone to Latin class in, in Catholic school. So I knew Anai Domini. You know, Anai is the year of. Domini is the dominant one, the master. The year of, we say the year of our what? Lord. That's the translation over to English. But that BC thing, before Crayolas, right? No, before cookies. Before what? Crocodiles. Yeah, before crocodiles. No, what, what was the BC thing? And I used to play dumb to my friends. BC, BC, help me out. What was BC? B before cookies. And, and, they, and they would go, Shh, what are you, some kind of cr stupid Christian? Before Christ. And I go, that's right. Do you know that globally on the calendar time has been marked from this event? A.D. B.C. is not new. When they're sitting there looking at you, you're stupid for believing this. I think it's kind of gone around the world. Everyone seems to accept this. Why do you not know about it? Now, sometimes they don't know because no one's told them. I remember when I first came here 25 years ago, I was out in the water surfing. Over there it used to be... Um, Oh, we call it, where Bubba Gumps is. A little, there's a little break there we was across from the office. And so I was just out there surfing. And I was surfing, it was, it was during the holiday time. And we got in a conversation with one of the surfers in between, you know, when, you, you, when you're waiting for waves, there's not a lot to do. You're just sitting out there on your board waiting between sets. And, and uh, he asked, what do you do? I said, I'm a pastor. And uh, what are you doing? He, oh, I'm just, I don't know, nothing. And um, I said, well, that's okay. God loves you. I don't even know if there is a God. Why do you say that? I said, well, because I, I know there is. Well, how do you know there is? I said, you ever seen that calendar thing, that ADBC thing? You know, like, he goes, if there was really a God, why doesn't he show himself? I said, well, he already did. Really, how, how do you know that? I said, you've seen a calendar, right? It says ADBC, and I played dumb, between sets. And I said, what, what's it mean? And right then a wave came and he took the wave in. I took the next one. We worked our way back out into the lineup and we're sitting there. I said, so, so help me out. What, what, what did it mean? He said, I don't know. He said, well, A.D. is Anai Domini, the year of our Lord. And B.C. is before Christ, before the Messiah, the one sent to save. And the question you're asking is a great question. Because God is real, and he did want you to know about him. But he knew if he showed up in his glory. I mean, if people freak out at an angel showing up, can you imagine if the glorious one, the, the one described in Revelation, that, that just the brightness of his glory, it says there's bows round about him, just from his pure light, God's light, just casting rainbows of all different colors, and just, just from him moving. Can you imagine he just moves his arm, and all of a sudden, whoo, all these different rainbows around him, just from his pure God. It says God is light. What would we do if the pure, holy God showed up? I mean, forget being afraid. I think we'd be disintegrated. But, you know, that's just my own. Uh, I, I, so God goes, look, I have to show you me in a way that doesn't freak you out. Now, how's he going to do that? And that's where Jesus came into the story. He said, I will take myself and reveal myself. Well, if I show up the way I am, that's just not going to work. So what's he have to do? It's the very thing that I learned this truth from the story of um, Paul Harvey. You guys ever heard of Paul Harvey? He was on the radio. He used to tell stories. Yeah. And he was telling a story Christmas time about a, a wife 
of a farmer who was always telling her husband about how God sent Jesus to die for us and he loves us and the, the farmer's like, if he's really God, why doesn't he just show up as God? You know? What's his problem? And she kept going, honey, it's about time for service. Are you going to come this year? No, I'm not coming. And you guys go. Take the kids. Get out of here. And, and he, he sat down. It was a real wintry area that they lived in. I mean, snow blowing. And, and he, he's out there. He, he's in nice cozy in his little easy chair by the fire. And he he's, um, sits back to read the paper. And he hears punk against the glass next to him. Like a thud. Oh, what is that? And he goes back to read and he hears punk again and he looks and it's a bird ha is outside in the storm and it's seeing the, the warmth of the house, the light, but it's flying into the... And he looks and there's more of them. And so he's like, you know, farmers, they care about their animals. He's like, the poor bird's going to freeze to death in the snow. So he, he gets on his coat and everything. He goes outside and he tries to get the bird. Come on, bird, let's go. Uh, he opens the barn door over there and he starts trying. And he, you ever try to corral birds? This works really well. As he goes toward the birds, what do the birds do? Fly away. Fly away. They're like, get away from me, man. You know, you look like an abominable snowman coming at me. They're freaked out. And he's sitting there going, stupid bird. So he goes in and gets some breadcrumbs and he starts throwing them. He's trying to make a little trail to lead them to the barn. Come on, birdies. Come on. They're not interested in eating. They had, he's like, what can't you guys tell, tell him? I, I'm trying to save you. And, and a thought came to him. He says, if only I could make myself into a bird, then I could t speak to them in the bird chirping language that they'd speak, and they would know I'm just here to help them, and I could lead them into the barn. And right then, bing, the light came on. Why did God have to become a baby? and grow into a man so he could speak to us, not in his God form, but in the form of flesh. The, see, John said the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we could behold the Father, full of grace and full of truth. That's what Jesus did at Christmas time. He became in a form that we could relate to. And that's why, that, that's the message of the gospel. When people say, what's the big deal? I say, it's a pretty big deal. Because if we would have stayed in his godly form and showed up, what would we have done? Just like that farmer would be like, run! Freaked out, get out! But the Lord says, no. I'll put him in, and I'll put him in a humble place. I'll put him in the trough where the shepherds that raised the sacrifices for the temple they swaddle them I'll put them there so they'll know that's the sacrifice I'm giving what a beautiful gift and because of that gift we really know the true expression of what gifts are all about because God gave the greatest gift it wasn't cheap for him don't ever think just because salvation is free it's cheap it's not cheap very expensive but it's only free because of who the guy giving is more benevolent than anyone I've ever met down here. He's a God, he's a God that loves us and gives with just beautiful, beautiful gift. He says, I want to give you a gift. Here's a gift of salvation. Anybody want this gift? No, I, don't, I know I'm preaching to the choir looking around here. You guys, who's received that gift already? Raise your hand. It's a great gift, isn't it? I mean, who's going to say, I ain't taking it? But if you haven't received it, please consider. Look around. Raise your hands again. Everybody's received the gift. These guys all did. We just want to let you know we're not the only ones that get to have it. It's available for everyone, right? It's not, not like it's a, like a select few. The first guys, first 100 patrons that get there get the TV, right? The, the first one. <laughs> that's not how salvation works. It's not the first 100 get it and the rest don't. This is a gift that keeps on giving and this is a God who keeps on loving. And we got to let people know, get while you can get it. It's still, is, is salvation still available? As long as it's still available, I got a job to do. I get the privilege to tell people, it's available. Get it while it's available. 
And that's my encouragement to you. If you don't know this sweet gift, just say, God, I'll take it. I mean, he went to a lot of trouble to make it available. All you have to do is say, I'll take it. And when you do, isn't it sweet how he, he meets you right where you're at? That's what, he's, that's what he wants. Our maker wants to meet each of us where we are at and commune with us. He wants to have a relationship with you because he loves you. He made you in his image. Nothing wrong with that. You, it says that we were made for God's good pleasure. Did you realize that God took great pleasure in making you? He's like, I'm going to make that one. That guy is he. I'll make him real unique. I'll get a kick out of it. I mean, I, I'm sure he has a sense of humor when I look around at this crowd. I get an even more sense of humor when I look in the mirror, but I know that he's, he's a God that, I mean, look at how diverse he's made us. And he loves us all. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the greatest Christmas message I could tell you. God has given us a great gift, a gift of everlasting life. And if you haven't received it, let's close in prayer. Father, I pray that the ones, perhaps they're just hearing about this gift, they didn't even know it was available. Lord, just let them know to come to you, that they can receive it. And Lord, for us that have received it, thanks so much for that great gift. Help us be mindful of that sweetness that you have for us, that great love and grace and compassion. Lord, help it touch us, Lord, in such a way that we would, we would reflect your love, your grace, your compassion to those around us. As we celebrate the birth of the greatest gift given, Lord, fill our hearts with overwhelming sense of, of, of joy and compassion generosity, Lord, that it would only mirror the generosity that you have given to us, that we could truly reflect you to those around us. I ask that, Lord, as we go into this time of celebrating the gift you've given, Lord, make it a sweet, sweet time filled with your spirit for all of us. And, and, and we ask these things in the name of your precious son, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And all that agree with me said, Amen. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.